see parents push their own passions on their children versus allowing their children to find their own passions. And it well, might, again, think- might not be sports or whatever it is. I mean, I, I loved music and my husband also was a musician and we tried to get our kids into a uh, band and stuff and they did one semester of it and they were like, eh, this isn't for me. Well, do you think, it just made me think about that when you were saying it, do you think that we are not living our true authentic self and what we, our true passion in life, if we are pushing our passions onto our children? We're trying to essentially live vicariously through them. I think you're doing your children a huge disservice if you're doing that, because again, be who you came to be. And we talked about this at the beginning. Love will guide you. Love Mm -hmm. is your passions, is your purpose, is what you want to put your time and energy into. It's, um, you know, if you think about love guiding you, right, love will never guide you to something that's not something that you're, you know, and even people be like, well, people have gotten into bad relationships because of love. I mean, was it true love or was it lust? Was it some sort of, I mean, if you think about the truest, purest love for what we are, who we are, what we do, our passions, like that will guide you to the right, the right things. And so I think if you're pushing your own passions on your and purpose on your children, like you're doing them a huge disservice Mm -hmm. because the other thing is, is kids don't want to let their parents down. They really don't, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though they're defiant and they want to push the envelope, they don't want to let them down. And I think this is why this whole concept of emotional intelligence, self-awareness, self-regard, assertiveness, empathy is a kid. If we can do that as a parent and give that to our children, they just make better decisions when they're older, you know, Mm -hmm. even with my kids who, you know, my oldest son, he always pushes the envelope. He always Mm -hmm. has just always at school, everything. And I finally made a rule up. I was like, look, if you get in trouble at school, I better hear about it from you first. Mm -hmm. Meaning you get in the car, you're going to be, you need to tell me, because if I hear about this from the school, you put me in a very awkward situation. And so I just need to know about it first. Well, what that did was create the safe space for him to be like, Hey, I messed up. Something happened Mm -hmm. at school today. You're going to, we could talk about it versus, you know, if I hear about it from the school, anger was what I instantly, I would get so angry Mm -hmm. because it's like, Mm -hmm. Oh God, I got this call and they're, you know, it's, and it sucks when they're talking about your child who you love more than anything. And the school's like, Hey, your kid sucks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and they're total like hellion. And you're like, oh my God, like, you know, and versus whenever I was prepared for the call and I could say like, hey, I'm first off, thank you for the call. Ben and I've already had this conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, he got in the car today and told me about what happened in Mrs. Larson's room. Um, that That's a completely different conversation. Mm-hmm. And so that also builds a lot of trust, right? Of mm-hmm. like, you tell me this and we're going to work on it together versus I hear about it from someone else. Then it feels like parenting of like, I got to give you a consequence, Mm -hmm. all those things. So, and I think that that was one thing that really did help me with my sons was that whole, like, you can tell me anything, you can come to me with anything. And I actually want to hear it from you before I hear it from someone else. That's created a ton of trust with us and, you know, how we parent them. Well, I think also just like treating your children like people, not just like coming down on them, like this is the way it's going, going to be. Allowing yourself to have that conversation, I think opens the door for that trust and that loving relationship because you don't want your kids to fear you, fear your fear your help, fear whatever consequence is going to come down so they don't tell you. So I think just that it all kind of comes together, that self-awareness of what kind of environment are you creating? What kind of energy are you creating? What kind of vibes are you creating in your own home to allow this connection? Because they are their own people. And just like anyone, we're connected. We have to, we have to build a relationship of choice. Just because they're your kids doesn't mean they're, they're bound to have that relationship with you. Right. Absolutely. I mean, and I, I I think when I started like getting more curious about like the emotionally intelligent parent, I kept seeing stuff on social media of of people in their like twenties and early thirties being like, Mm. I just, I've never had a great relationship with my parents. And mm-hmm. I, I really want to work on my relationship with my parents. And, you know, I, I am, even though I grew up in a divorced family, we had kind of a tumultuous childhood. I've always had a wonderful relationship with my parents. Um, you know, we both, we've had our ups and downs and we, yeah. we went through different things, but, um, you know, I, I look at, I, I feel like I have a great relationship with both of my sons 
And I do think so much of it has just been, you know, I've tried to like how I've always thought of myself as a parent or like the, um, like, you know, like the bumpers on a bowling alley, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to throw the ball for them. I might, if they, you know, I might be like, Hey, here's, here's the, here's what you want to do. Like, give them all the guidance and stuff, but they've got to figure it out. Right. And there's going to mm-hmm. be bumpers. And then sometimes I just take the bumpers off and I'm like, here we go. <laughs> and yeah. there's been times that they've totally crashed and burned. And it's been like, Hey, I'm here to help you pick up and, you know, put those bumpers back on if you need them. And, you know, just guide you to the end result, which is to you being a, a, a a good human, a good Mm -hmm. human being. Like, you know, at the heart of everything with my kids, I'm like, I don't care if you're great at basketball. I don't care how smart you are. I want you to be a good person that people like to be around that you're Mm -hmm. kind to everyone. Um, but you also know where to stand your ground and how to be assertive when you need to be. Well, I think that's a hard part because, you know, you want to be a kind person, you want to be a good person, but then you fall into that trap of becoming the people pleaser. Yeah. So how do you balance that standing as an adult or a child, standing your ground, standing in your values and who you authentically are without disappointing, without that fear of guilt or disappointment of others? Well, I think that comes with age, but I also think it goes back to the love, the love spot, right? I mean, Uh you know, when we love someone, it's not like, and we let them know we love them. It's never, I don't, you know, feel like if my kids, something happens, they're not like, oh, I disappointed mom. They're like, mom loves me unconditionally. Where, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm going to be, this is going to be so disappointing to my parents. Um, Which I don't think is a bad thing, you know, that we want to please our parents, but I am a pleaser. Like if you take that mm-hmm. saboteur assessment, I'm guessing you're probably a pleaser based uh, on yeah. some of the stuff, like a hyperachiever pleaser. You're probably very yeah. much like me. Very much so. My husband, he's not a pleaser at all. Neither like, is mine. He he's a super nice sh- guy. Yeah. He's, you know, he's, people love him. He's, but he's not like, oh, uh, you know, I'm, I need to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, I'm the pleaser, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I'm the one My husband who, can care less what people yeah. think. But the pleaser in me, um, you know, it's something I have to be aware of because it's good until it's not. Yeah. And it's great to be that pleaser person who likes to take care of other people. But one, it can go too far. Two, mm-hmm. you can encroach on people's space. And three, it, it ultimately becomes like this self-fulfilling prophecy that nobody pleases me. Nobody takes mm-hmm. care of me. Oh, poor me. I've mm-hmm. done everything for everyone and nobody does anything for me. I mean, I've, I've given like Academy Award winning <laughs> monologues in my house about Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes. 